Yeah, I saw that uh, drop in silver this morning, so uh, I don't know what the hell was going on. I was making a uh, palladium video here, <laughs> and I'm saying, what the hell? And um, I looked over at the euro, and I said, something's going on. So I booked out of it. Now, I should have said stops, but I didn't. Uh, sometimes I don't like those, but I was getting ready to set some stops. I figured I was going to do it after this video. But I still, uh, I booked out of there before it dropped this low, and I still secured gains. Now, they are pretty decent gains, too. I mean, they were still pretty decent gains because of the time frame I got out of it today. Obviously, I should have got out of it first thing. And, uh, well, it's bouncing. It's bouncing. I almost got some, went back in here. I'm not sure. But yesterday, when I had the velocity shares, I got rid of about 40 percent of them and um, I got rid of uh, some Sprott PSLV now this morning I had a look I says I wonder what the premium I bet you the premium on a PSLV went up sure 9.69 percent no, I'll say 9.7 percent as of today you know intraday and yesterday it was below 9 percent but I decided to get rid of some of it which was smart. It was smart because, well, it was a good guess. Now, <laughs> my buddy Rabbi Bernanke, he didn't call me up and tell me what he was going to do today. Ah, but I like he's going to do that, right? But uh, he opened his mouth, scared the crap out of the markets. With the Fed not looking to engage in another round of quantitative easing in the near term, said Kathleen, director of FX research at GFT, you know, whatever, Greenwich, I don't know what the heck that means. We are seeing the euro dollar falling very sharply on the heels of that, so everybody's getting out of the speculation uh, assets, which is silver, a risk asset. It only drives up the price by speculation. Now, I'm being facetious there, but... Uh, I don't know if I want to dump in here right now again. Got me wondering. I should have at 34. I was thinking about it. It's going to bounce at 34. And uh, just might. Just might. I take a look at this a little bit more. See what kind of other news is out there because everything is very well news driven. Uh, but, you know. Part of it, reason where I think I'm going to get in is due to technical ins information. Now, this probably could go a little lower because you know around a little over 34 could be resistance. You know, and I was thinking of getting in there below 35. It was initially, so uh, but you know that's kind of like why I grabbed the money when I start seeing gains and I was doing that yesterday I was doing I don't know I did like 10 percent in the first thing in the morning and I went up more did some more then I did some more then I saw a little bit of sprot and I didn't sell off like I think it was about 40 percent of the USLV yesterday then this morning I was tempted to sell more I was gonna set stops figured I'd do a video on palladium or something I don't think it was gonna crash that fast but it's silver right but when I saw it crashing like that, I didn't think, hold, 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 and say, oh, hopefully it goes back. I knew something was freaking wrong. I saw the euro. I dumped out of there. But everything I sold today was still pretty good gains. I mean, it weren't like yesterday's, but they were still pretty good gains. So I don't give it. Well, so what is you, you're playing a game, right? So you got to react fast. But um, I got to look at this. I'm probably going to jump back in it on the velocity shares I don't know but uh, <laughs> it's pretty interesting watching this euro slam down I saw that I says I'm getting out of there right now and here's silver now it kind of does make sense this is a uh, resistance point maybe you know I should have bought it right back in here I was watching it careful but I was doing some other things and uh, wasn't watching it 100% but, you know, still got out of it. So we got the uh, fiat cash. And um, there was no losses or anything. It was all gains. So it wasn't that bad. Anyway, 
but uh, you know I knew a lot of people were going to be more interested you know when I bought USOV I didn't know what the hell it was going to do it went up right so I sold part of it but I should have said stops this morning first thing I was going to set them a little later now that really kind of you know I was almost thinking about this but you never know I mean every time silver has and that's why I say secure things in steps because you know the fury the euphoria gets high and all this kind of garbage like that go ahead call it a conspiracy go ahead call it you know the game is rigged that's not how I look at it I want to know how the game is rigged I want to set things that protect me now obviously if I set stops this morning I would have secured even better gains but I did secure pretty good gains even this morning. And yesterday, of course, I secured very good gains. It was a good guess. It was a good guess. But um, if you're not as market is rigged, obviously you don't know 100%. But uh, you know a lot of it is psychology. And uh, you know the euphoria was really high yesterday. Everybody on all these silver channels is jumping up and down. It's going to go to 42. It's going to go to 40. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're going to tell you the conspiracies slammed it down. Well, thank God for the conspiracy because you know if you sold this whole thing up here, you'd be like, hey, I could buy it back and go back, ride it back up, right? Thank God for the conspiracy. So, uh, you know, I don't look at it that way. Yes, it's, uh, it is a racket. I know it is. It's been this way forever. But, you know, I also realized something else, and I just want to drive this point home. Shiny silver coins don't produce anything. People do. It's actual production of goods and services. It's actually the production of hard goods and services that people need that drive the economy, not fluff BS. So, uh, you know, this metal is not going to save the world, you know. And actually, the talking heads, which I guess I'm one of them in a way, but uh, you know, first off, um, you know, I'm basically doing this for free because you know I make some money off of YouTube, but it's mainly on a car video, so I put some of them out. So I'm probably going to put out a video on uh, generation of electrical power because you know this type of stuff. A lot of people just want to hear. Ra ra silver goes up, ra ra Ron Paul, and all this kind of garbage, you know. But um, I didn't expect this move, but I reacted fast enough, and I did secure brief, decent gains. Not as good as I could have, but you know, didn't set stops yet. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to crash like this so fast. That's a good one, huh? Thank you, Ben. You're freaking slick. But you know what? Uh, you didn't nail me, really. So. So actually, you're looking at this. That probably would have been the point right there. That probably would have been the point. So I don't know if I'm going to wait for it to drop below 35 if it ever does. If it is below 35, I'm going to kind of look at this garbage and look at some more news, and I'll probably buy it back into the USOV on a smaller bet. So, but like I said, I secured 40%. I sold 40% of the approximately 40% of the USLV yesterday. Uh, I got rid of the other 60% this morning. Even the other 60% this morning was still a pretty decent gain. You know, it wasn't as good as it could have been, obviously, but it was still a pretty decent gain. And uh, yesterday I also sold some of the Sprott PSLV. So, and not that I know everything. Obviously, I don't. I know Bernanke was going to say this, you know. I mean, it's pretty cool. So, but that tells you something, you know. One word out of his mouth could make the price go one way or the other, right? And it's almost like, you know, I was talking about yesterday with the IMF. The IMF says oil is, you know, here's oil, right? Oil's down now again, right? Oil is, um,. Oil is, is causing a, a danger to the European recovery, and uh, these speculators are causing it to go up. That's that's you know that's bad. It's bad. So the price just automatically drops. Why would the speculators listen to the IMF? Why? 
they're out there to make money, right? I mean, if they're bulls, right? If they're thinking oil's the way to go, why wouldn't they keep driving it up? It's almost like, yes, there is kind of like a game going on. The market is kind of rigged, but that's not how I think. I want to know how it's rigged. I want to know how it's rigged. So, I don't know if I'm going to jump back in these velocity shares just yet. Freaking crazy, man. That's a, That was a wild move. But like I said, I got out of there, man. I booked out of there. What uh, damage control was in place. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess, you know, you got to look at it this way. It's uh, the game's rigged. You're in a card game. You're playing against other people. And uh, there's going to be winners and losers. And uh, I'm not so damn old cover confident that I'm going to be the winner. Believe me, I ain't. But, uh, you know, that's something I've been saying all along. And, you know, these silver channels are going to be saying, the banksters knocked the price down. The, the racket, the cartel did it. It wasn't exactly that. But, yeah, the game's rigged. It is. It is. But it's not exactly like that. And I'm saying this again and again and again. Shiny silver coins aren't going to save the economy. People got to actually work for them, you know. Got to actually produce goods and services. So uh, that's the name of the game.